to Treasury Inheritance Ministry with myself, Yosef Ben Avram. And you've joined me today for a teaching that I've entitled Towards a Spirit-Filled Shavuot. And I really believe, brothers and sisters, that Yahweh wants to pour out His Spirit upon us. He wants to give us a fullness of His Ruach in our lives. And the question is, what are you doing to prepare to receive that Spirit? Now is the time, brothers and sisters, we've just finished Passover and Unleavened Bread. We're in the time of the counting of the Omar, the time where we prepare to receive the Spirit that Yahweh wants to give to you and to me. So, brothers and sisters, without further ado, I'd like us to pray and then I'd like us to get into this teaching. And I pray today that the word of Yahweh will really, really speak to your heart. I pray that if you have burdens on your shoulders today, that those burdens will be removed. I know, brothers and sisters, that we are alive in a time like no other. I know that there are people globally that are dying on a daily rate. We know that this virus has been spreading all over the place, but we need to take hope and we need to trust in the words of our King and our Father. He will never leave us nor forsake us, and He has a great and eternal plan, and we need to listen to His voice, and we need to hear what He's saying to us. So let's pray. Father, we want to thank you today in the wonderful and powerful name of Yeshua Mashiach. Father, that you are in control of everything, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, you who started the good work in us is faithful and just to bring it to completion. So I want to pray today, Father, that every person that listens to this teaching, that the good work that you have started in their lives, Father, that you will bring it to completion. I pray, Abba, Father, that no matter what they face, no matter what struggles they go through, no matter what trials they go through, that you, Abba, Father, will speak to them. I pray, Father, that you will draw closer to them as they draw closer to you and as they prepare their hearts and their lives to receive what you have in store for them, this Shavuot. I pray, Father, that, that you will bless them richly and, Father, that they will be like a, like a stream of living waters inside of them, that they will be overflowing, Father, with the goodness that you want to give to them. We thank you for this. We praise you and we honor you. In Messiah Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, before I start, I'd just like to say that parts of this teaching has first appeared on Treasure and Inheritance Ministry around about 2014. And Yahweh has led me to redo this during this festival season. And I believe the reason why he wants me to do that is to encourage the body, to encourage the body to prepare for the fullness of his spirit and to ask him to show them what it is that he's wanting from them. Not only you, but me too. And I pray that this teaching will really, really breathe new life into you. Now, brothers and sisters, we've just completed the festival of Passover, yet all that Passover is, it never, ever ends. You know what Yeshua has done for us? It should live on in our lives as we grow and mature on a daily basis. But for many, the work of Messiah has kind of been watered down as they're unable to understand what his sacrifice truly, truly did for them. And it's important that we as believers, that we study the life and the ministry of Messiah Yeshua, as well as his death and resurrection. We need to understand his ministry as well as his death and resurrection. And that we ask the Ruach to illuminate the truth of his great sacrifice and what that means for us as believers. We need to ask him. And, and I pray that you will pray and ask him to show you what his sacrifice truly means. You see, because without his sacrifice, you and I would have no real life. There would be no hope of an eternal life. You see, we would have no real future and we would have no real power to overcome the enemy in these last days. And it's because of the sacrifice that Yeshua laid down, his life, his sacrifice, that you and I have hope and, and we have a deliverance. We have this deliverer that has set us free. Now Passover, brothers and sisters, is all about that deliverance. Yet how many of us truly believe that? How many of us truly, truly believe that the scripture that says, whom the Son has set free, is free indeed? How many of us really live a free life? How many of us truly live in the power of the set-apart spirit on a daily basis? We are alive in what I believe, brothers and sisters, is the final generation. And Yeshua himself told us in Matthew chapter 24 what we are to expect and that things, brothers and sisters, are not going to get easier at all, but they are going to get progressively worse. Yet we have not been left, he said, as orphans. 
Now, I want to say this to you. Do you believe that for you today? That Yeshua has not left you or me as an orphan. He gave us his set-apart spirit so that we might overcome, so that we might endure, so that we might have this power that is the same power that rose him from the grave living within us, so that we can overcome and, and get to the end. Brothers and sisters, the world that you and I are living, alive in, it has no idea who the real Yeshua is. Neither do they desire to know him at all. For they, the Bible tells us that they love darkness more than they love the truth. But the question I want to ask you today is, how will they know if no one tells them? How will they hear if no one is sent out to go and tell them? You see, as believers, we have something that the world does not. We have redemption, brothers and sisters, and we have truth. Truth that is not the way that the world understands it. Truth which originates in the, in the mind and in the heart and in the character of Yahweh. And it is that truth, brothers and sisters, that is found in the person and the finished work of Messiah Yeshua. You see, our lives, everything we do, everything we say and how we live, it should continue to be a testimony of that reality every day, that our Creator, our King is alive, that He is the one true Elohim. You see, if we've truly been set free by the blood of Messiah Yeshua, then we should believe that we have the same power that rose Yeshua alive in us. The same power that rose Yeshua from the grave now lives in us. And we should desire to speak and proclaim the one true Deliverer, Yeshua, to the world in the hope that the world might too be saved from, this, from this, this great death that they're facing, this separation, eternal separation that they are facing, so that many might be saved and so that many might come to the knowledge of who He is. Brothers and sisters, I want to ask you today, have you lost hope in this trial that you find yourselves in, this trial that we as humankind are facing globally at this present moment? Yes, brothers and sisters, we are seeing a global pandemic. And I, I believe somehow the enemy is looking and he's thinking that he is winning and that he's halting the great plans of our king. He thinks that he has stopped the moving of the gospel and the proclamation of the truth. Yet in these trials, brothers and sisters, Yeshua tells us and the word of Yahweh tells us continually that it is in the trials that we find ourselves in that we are refined and we come out the other side stronger. And I believe that even though the enemy might be standing there and rubbing his hands together thinking he is one, Yahweh is standing shaking his head and saying that it's not yet time. My people will arise. My people will go forth. And my name shall be known upon this earth. I believe that with all my heart. Let's have a look at what it says in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 35. It says, Some of the wise will stumble so that they may be refined, purified and made spotless until the time of the end, for it will, for it will still come at the appointed time. Brothers and sisters, now in this time that we find ourselves in, it's a time, I believe, of true refinement, a time where Yahweh is refining His people. In Daniel chapter 12, in verse 10, it tells us, Many will be purified, not just a few, many, and they will be made spotless and refined. But the wicked, and brothers and sisters, look around you today and take note of what the wicked are doing. They are continuing to be wicked, but they still do not understand the truth because the scriptures are truth. And the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 12 that none of the wicked will ever understand. But those who are wise, made wise by the spirit of Yahweh that is working in them, they will understand. Brothers and sisters, I pray that during this time that you will ask Abba to show you his desire for you and what he desires to do with your life. That you will come to see that we are truly moving closer to the day of his return. But that his desire is to partner with you. Yahweh desires to partner with you. To use your life as a living testimony to many. If you are willing to die to self and live for him. You know, each one of us has this hope. This hope in us. And it gives life to those who are dead in mind and in spirit. And we need, we need to understand that it's now time that we begin to trust that our King is far from finished with us. 
He has so much more, brothers and sisters, that he desires to give you. And he has so much more that he wants to refine and take out of you and replace it with his goodness and his spirit so that you will be a living testimony for him. You know, during this time of COVID-19, we've been given time and we've also been given an opportunity to draw closer to our king and to ask him to reveal truth to us and to help us to be ready for the days ahead. You know, for many of us, we have been confined to our homes away from the stress of normal life and jobs and, and things like that. And we have more time to pray and to seek the face of Yeshua. The truth is we should use this opportunity now that we've been given to draw closer to him. Passover was a time and it is a time where we are to be expectant to hear from Yeshua and where we are to come with the right heart attitude. And even now as Passover has passed and we are counting the Omar, there are lessons, brothers and sisters, that we need to learn and we need to take heart. This is not just a time of one day. It's a time of preparation to receive what Yeshua has for us. From the time of Passover, unleavened bread, right up until Shavuot, brothers and sisters, it is a season of preparing ourselves to receive what Yeshua has for us. You know, during this time leading up to Shavuot, we have to ask ourselves, how expectant are we? What, what is the fires we are feeling now globally? What, what if these, these fires and the things that are going on now globally and individually in our lives, what if it's all to prepare us to let go of, of our own fears and to allow the Creator to steer the boat? What if Yeshua is wanting to get you ready to receive a full measure of His Ruach? So that after this pandemic, we will be truly ready with urgency to go out and proclaim Him. Brothers and sisters, the world is in a desperate place. Only one man can bring true healing. Only one man can deliver them from what is about to take place. You know, Passover is a time where we take stock of our lives and we remember our deliverance from oppression and slavery. We remember what took place under the wicked rule of Pharaoh over the children of Israel. How he placed taskmasters over them and caused them to carry a heavy burden. Yet in this time, brothers and sisters, they cried out to Yahweh and he heard them. And in his faithfulness, he sent to deliver in the man of Moshe. Yet in the book of Hebrews, it tells us something very important for us that are alive today. In Hebrews chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 1, it says this, Therefore, holy brothers, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider the missionary and high priest of our confession, Yeshua, who was faithful to him, who appointed him as also was Moses in all his house. For he had been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he was built the house, has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who builds all things is God. Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were afterwards to be spoken. But Messiah is faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are, if we hold fast our confidence and the glory of our hope firm to the end. So what the writer of the book of Hebrews is showing us is the similarity between Moses and Yeshua, not forgetting that Yeshua is superior. You see, brothers and sisters, Yeshua will return to regather his children, and so too this was the role of Moses. Moses was called upon to gather the children of Israel and then to lead them into the promised land. And I believe that this is the message that Yeshua wants us to understand this season. That He alone is our deliverer. He is not some, some man that, that, is, that is out there and just trying to pull things together. No, He is the Messiah. And He wants you and I to remember Him this season. You know, 2,000 years ago, Yeshua came to earth and He died for our sins. The Bible tells us that He perfectly fulfilled the requirement to be our Passover lamb. And His mission was to die so that we might be set free, brothers and sisters, from the bondage of sin and death. Not only the bondage of sin and death, but from all the things that we fear, from all our own insecurities. His entire message was a message of freedom to those who were oppressed. 
You know, when Yeshua preached his first sermon in Nazareth, that's recorded in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. He's actually quoting from the book of Isaiah chapter 61. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, it says this, The Spirit of Yahweh is upon me because he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to send away crushed ones with release. You know, brothers and sisters, the entire reason that Yeshua came was to bring deliverance to the captives. And what's interesting is that the Greek word used in this passage for captive, it actually means someone taken as a prisoner of war by the point of a spear. Someone taken as a prisoner of war by the point of a spear. You know, brothers and sisters, the prisoners in the kingdom of darkness are captive to their own carnal desires, which then birth seeds of destruction. But Yeshua came to set us free from these desires and strongholds so that we might become a light to the nations. And this is the reason that our King died. You see, brethren, this is what Yeshua wants you to understand this season. What the disciples were hoping for shall come to pass as we enter into the final days. The final kingdom of our King shall be established. As we begin to see the rise of the new world order around us, we need to take hope that our king has overcome. He has overcome the enemy, has Satan on our behalf. He's done it already. And that he has promised that he will return and that he will take control of this chaotic world. That, brothers and sisters, is true deliverance. In Matthew chapter 16, Yeshua asks his disciples, who do they say that he is? And the story holds the keys to our understanding of what is required of us and what lies ahead for us as we wait for Yeshua's return. In Matthew chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 13, it says the following. Now when Yeshua came into the parts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his taught ones, saying, Who do men say that the son of Adam is? And they said, Some say, Yochanan the Immerser, and others, Eliyahu, and others, Yerimiyahu, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, And you? Who do you say I am? And Simon Kepha answered and said, You are the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim. And Yeshua answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Kepha, and on this rock I shall build my assembly, and the gates of Sheol shall not overcome it. And I shall give you the keys of the reign of the heavens, and whatever you bind on earth shall be having been bound in the heavens. And whatever you loosen on earth shall have been loosened in the heavens. For a deeper understanding, brothers and sisters, on binding and loosing, you can find a video teaching on our YouTube channel by just typing in binding and loosing. It's very, very interesting. And I don't have time to go into it now, but I suggest that you go and listen to that teaching. So Peter understood, brothers and sisters, that Yeshua was the Messiah. Yet he was still hoping and waiting for Yeshua to come and destroy the kingdom of Rome and to liberate them from their tyranny. But this was not the purpose, brothers and sisters, of his first coming. Instead, he came to restore us to Abba Father, to help us become the sons and daughters of his kingdom. His desire was and still is to give us the keys to the kingdom, so that we might be the priests that he desires us to be, so that we might walk in that authority that he wants us to walk in. This is what Passover is all about. That because of his death and resurrection, you and I have access to the kingdom and we are now able to become his children, children of inheritance. This is why Yeshua said to his disciples that they are to do this. The, the last meal that they had was in remembrance of him. Yeshua's Passover, brothers and sisters, far supersedes the Passover, the Exodus. Because without his sacrifice, we have no hope and we have no future. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 20, it continues and it says this, Then he warned his taught ones that they should say to no one that he is Yeshua the Messiah. And from that time, Yeshua began to show to his taught ones that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and to suffer much from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. And Kepha took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Be kind to yourself, Master. This shall not be to you. You see, brothers and sisters, Peter, he didn't get it. 
He believed that Yeshua is the Messiah, yet he was hoping for deliverance from the evil that was upon the earth and propagated by Rome. Just the same as what is happening today by world governments and leaders and the one world order. We too, brothers and sisters, are are hoping for that. But we are alive in a time where Yeshua will return a second time and he will destroy the kingdom of darkness and he will set up his eternal kingdom. You see, what Peter was hoping for is a very soon reality for you and I. This is what Yeshua is wanting you and I to understand. He wants you to understand that he's coming back as the conquering king. He's coming back, brothers and sisters, to fetch his bride, one that has made herself ready. And he's coming to destroy the kingdom of darkness once and for all. You see, we can take hope that he has not abandoned us. The story, brothers and sisters, is far from over. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, it says, But he returned and said to Kepha, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for your thoughts are not those of Elohim, but those of men. You see, Peter didn't understand that Yeshua had to die so that you and I might have life. That his coming was far greater than what Peter understood. His coming was so that you and I might become his children, so that all men might believe and repent and be saved. Isn't this just amazing? You see, the problem is that many have stopped at the part of the story, this part of the story, and they haven't seen the rest. The church has wrapped it up just there, forgetting the words of Yeshua to his disciples a little further in the passage. We've taken people so far as salvation and we've ended it there and not taken them any further. But it goes on in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24 and it says, Then Yeshua said to his taught ones, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his stake and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses his own life? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his life? For the son of Adam is going to come in the esteem of his father with his messengers, and then he shall reward each according to his works. Truly I say to you, There are some standing here who shall not taste death until they see the son of Adam coming in his reign. Man, isn't this just amazing? Can you see right here that he's telling his disciples the entire story, yet they didn't fully understand it? But you and I, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness that this day of truth might overtake us. No, instead, we can sit and listen and obey and strive to do all that our king is asking of us. And Yeshua says clearly that if you want to see my deliverance, if you want to see my deliverance in your life, if you want to see my glory and power work in you, then you need to learn to deny yourself, pick up your cross and learn to follow me. You see, we need to accept the deliverance that Yeshua has given to us when he came to die on that stake. We need to allow His work to change us from the inside out so that we no longer live in our flesh but live in the power of His set-apart spirit. And we need to learn to believe that we have what it takes now to be a disciple. We need to understand, brothers and sisters, that the same power that rose Yeshua from the grave can and will live in you. Yeshua continues to tell them in verse 25, What does it profit to gain the whole world, yet your life is a total mess? You did not allow my my spirit to work in you. You did not allow my spirit to change you. Yet you did not choose what was right and you didn't accept the light. Then Yeshua ends off in verse 27 with something very, very important. He gives them a promise that he is coming back. He's coming back as they are hoping as the conquering king. And he's coming back to deliver us from this body of death and destructive world we are in. Yet he tells us that he will reward those who have faithfully obeyed him. And he will judge those who choose the path of compromise. The question is, brothers and sisters, what are we doing while we wait for his return and our ultimate deliverance? In James chapter 5 and verse 7, it says this, So brothers, be patient until the coming of the master. See, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You too be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the master has drawn near. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 23, it says the following, 
And you children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in Yahweh your Elohim, for he shall give you the teacher of righteousness and cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain as before. Then in Acts chapter 1 and verse 4, it says this, And meeting with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard from me. Because Yohanan truly immersed in water, but you shall be immersed in the set-apart spirit not many days from now. Brothers and sisters, as we exit this season of unleavened bread, we need to ask ourselves, what are we waiting for? As we are counting the Omar and we are waiting in anticipation for Shavuot, we need to ask ourselves, what exactly are we waiting for? Before we continue, let us define the word wait in the Old Testament. In the scriptures, the word most often translated wait in the sense of waiting on Yahweh is the Hebrew word chava or kwava. It means to bind together, perhaps by twisting strands as in making a rope. Another meaning is look patiently, tarry or wait, and hope with expectancy to look eagerly. The second most frequently used word or translated as wait is yachal. And Yechal means to wait or hope with expectancy as it is translated in our English Bibles as such. The King James sometimes translates Yechal as trust, as in Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 5, whereas the New American Standard has it as wait expectantly. A third word sometimes translated wait is Damam. Now Damam means to be dumb, to grow silent, be still, but it's sometimes translated as wait, tarry or rest. A fourth word for waiting is shacha, to wait, to tarry, or long for. Now, there is a Greek word called pros dochomai. In the pri- it's, it's the primary word used in the New Testament for the concept of waiting. It is a compound word from pros, which means to or towards, and dechomai, which means receive, accept. So pros dochomai means to receive to oneself, to receive favorably, to expect, to look for, to wait for. That's what Yahweh is saying to us. Wait with expectancy. In all these words you, you, that, that I mentioned, in all the different meanings, one thing comes through continually. To wait and to rest in that waiting. To wait and to look patiently. To wait and to receive. To wait for oneself and to, to be expectant. But the truth of the matter is, let's be honest, waiting is never easy. Yet we need to be waiting for the right thing, not wasting time. And for many, the very idea of waiting for something, it kind of stirs up anxiety. Yet now more than ever, during this time of uncertainty, brothers and sisters on the earth, we need to be waiting. Just as the wise virgins were waiting, so we need to be preparing and waiting for what Yeshua wants us to do. This season of counting the Omar is a time of waiting and getting ready for the fire of Yeshua to fill us. You know, each and every festival is supposed to set us on a journey that the Father has set out for us that specific year. Because the festival seasons are times of growth and change. This should cause us to wonder and think about the times and seasons we're in. Many are waiting for the end of the world and keep looking for the next sign to show them what the end is or how close it is. They search the internet and they read just about anything that you throw at them. They have no filter whatsoever. And it's kind of scary to think that they are the ones that actually were meant to be busy doing their father's business. But our Satan has them deceived as they have lost their real focus. They are waiting for things that will not benefit them at all in the end. Why? Because we are not called to wait for the end of days. We are called to redeem the time for the days of evil. We are called to advance the kingdom of our king like never before in these days with a mighty, mighty display of his power. And we can only do that, brothers and sisters, if we are filled with his spirit. This cannot be done if we are waiting for signs which you see on the TV, in the newspapers, or even on the internet. Every year, as I stated, we do the same festivals, then there are those that grow, and then there are those that hear, but they never change. We need to understand that the Father is doing a new thing and and we need to understand that He's busy refining and taking out a people who are ready to speak out for Him. And not only to speak about Him, but to do His works. I believe that there will be people that do not fear, 
for they know his voice and they keep his commandments. They have no fear of men or of the past because they have gone through a true process of laying it all down. I need to explain it like this. I believe that these people are truly growing into the image of Yeshua. They didn't just keep the festival, but they allowed the festival to change them. They understood the meaning of the spring festival message of deliverance. They sought their deliverance in a spiritual way and didn't just speak about what happened in Egypt. They cried out to Yeshua to deliver them from the pains held in their hearts for years. They asked to be set free from the bondage of things like lust, pride and anger. They asked to be set free as the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Maybe you are one of those who got your freedom and you are rejoicing as you listen to this teaching. Or maybe you are an individual still bound in your hurt and pain. You are still in the season of unleavened bread. But you need to be truthful and break before Yeshua and allow Him to show you the condition of your heart and the roots of your pain, fears and problems. Brothers and sisters, like I said, Yeshua is doing a new thing with those who are listening and allowing His Spirit to search their hearts. Yea in and yea out, Yeshua says, Search your heart, search your heart, repent of your sins, so that I can help you grow in Me. But people seem to only cut off the branches of their issues without ever dealing with the true roots. And it's for this reason that we need the Ruach in our lives now more than ever. It's now that we need to be eagerly asking for the Spirit of Yahweh to search our hearts. If we search our own hearts, we will never find the roots and we will always merely be swinging or, or, or cutting at the protruding branches. But we'll never truly be uprooting them. Brothers and sisters, there is a harvest coming. Despite what is happening globally, despite the fact that we can't travel by aircraft or travel around borders, there still is a harvest coming and the workers are still few. Yeshua said this and we need to believe it. There will be more people falling away from the faith in the last days than there will be of those who want to go out and get the lost saved. Again, I want to ask you, what are you waiting for? If you knew that the president of your country was coming to visit you, would you make sure that your house is clean and spotless? Or would you just leave the dirty dishes messy and lying around? You see, this is how many believers are. They go through the rituals of the festival of Passover and unleavened bread, and on the outside they seem to look all shiny to other believers. But in reality, they have not changed one thing on the inside. They are still a dirty mess. They haven't really searched their hearts and received deliverance from the things that bind them. Yeshua has been wanting to clean them and prepare them for this latter rain that He so willingly wants to pour out over them on Shavuot. If people were willing and would just repent and prepare their hearts in a way that He asked, I believe we would see a true army arise in this last times. The reality of this is that when Shavuot comes, he will have to call out to them again, asking them to repent and return wholeheartedly to them, to Him. If we choose not to surrender in broken worship, I believe that He will pass us by again. He will only turn to those who are waiting in eager anticipation and preparing for His visitation. They are the faithful few, the ones who washed the dishes and made the house spotless for the visitation of the President. I believe that just as He has been delivering those who are seeking Him from oppression with signs and wonders this year, so too is going to fill them on the day of Shavuot because they prepared their hearts and lives as a living sacrifice to Him. They are the ones, brothers and sisters, who are praying for the harvest. They are praying in eager anticipation for the harvest to come in and for Him to fill them so that they can go out and reap for His kingdom. They are the ones, I believe, that allowed his Ruach to break down all the walls of self and rebuild them with his truth and his glory. They have learned the art of dying to self and living for him. Brothers and sisters, Yeshua is purging his children. He really is purging his children in this time. And he is taking those who are ready unto himself. He will fill them with a fire that cannot be contained and a new thing will take place on this earth that no eye has seen, nor ear has heard. These will be the ones, brothers and sisters, that will not be afraid of family members or friends' opinions. 
If you're not willing to lay it all down for him, you're not ready to be included in this army. If you're still questioning your loyalties or if you're seeing injustice but turning a blind eye, you're not ready. If you're mediocre in your faith, then you're not ready. If you're fearful of the future, you're not ready. But if you are committed and have allowed him to purge your heart deep within, if you have allowed him to help you get freedom from hurts, pains, addictions, you're on the road to becoming a soldier in the image of your king. Brothers, this is my prayer is that you'll be waiting for your set-apart fire to consume you, the Shavuot. That you will do some house cleaning in the days leading up to this festival, and that when you stand in His presence and He searches you, that it will be so emptied out that there will be nothing that can separate you from Him anymore. I pray that He will be able to pour the new wine into a new wineskin, so that you become a fountain of His Spirit to others. Only those who prepare to meet their King will actually have a true encounter with him. Are you willing to sweat like King David did the second time that he went and attempted to get the Ark of the Covenant back? Are you willing to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth of your condition, of your heart, and the areas of it that he dislikes? Are you willing to lay it bare so that you can get your healing and be filled to the brim? I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. Many of us are like a glass with sand at the bottom. We want to be filled up with living water, but we don't want to throw the sand out. You might have a measure of His Spirit in you, but it's not enough to only have a bit in the last days. That sand that lies at the bottom, brothers and sisters, will be the cause of attack after attack by the enemy. All the dirt that we don't deal with will become like an open door for the enemy to walk in and out. Yeshua wants to fill every part of you, and He wants to heal you from the inside out through His Holy Spirit. My question to you that I want to end off today is, will you be waiting? Let's pray. Father Yahweh, I want to thank you today so much for your truth. I want to thank you today, Father, that you are desiring to pour out your Spirit in our lives, to get us ready, Father, to help us to overcome, to help us to face the days ahead, days that are going to be dark, days that are going to be even worse than the days and the times that we are now alive in. But Father, you said that you have given us all things for life and godliness, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that you who started that good work in us, Father, will complete it. And Yahweh, that you will raise up an army in this final generation, that your truth and your, your, the knowledge of who you are shall be known across the nations. I pray, Father, in the name of Yeshua, for any person that has listened to this teaching that is struggling with things, Father, in their lives, I pray, Father, that you will set them free in the name of Yeshua. Father, that as they are sitting there at home right now and they're crying out to you and saying, Father, I want to be set free, I pray, Yahweh, that you will go by the power of your Spirit and that you will touch their lives, that they will be set free, Father, exactly where they are and that they will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have done a good work in them. I pray, Father, for freedom for, from addictions, freedom from pain, freedom from, from hurt, freedom from all kinds of things that bind us, Father. We pray for deliverance in their lives in the name of Yeshua. And we thank you for this. Father Yahweh, I pray that you will bless each and every person with more of your spirit, more of your love, more of your truth, and more understanding. Father Yahweh, we bless you, we praise you, we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Messiah Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to say thank you for joining me for this teaching. I pray that you'll be back again and join us for the next one. And until then, I want to invite you, please head over to our website at treasuredinheritanceministry.com where you can get more teachings. You can also join our live broadcast that we broadcast live once a week. All the information is on the website. And you can also um, enter in and, and be part of the community on our website where you can make new friends and also just get all the teachings in written format too. So again, it's at treasuredinheritanceministry.com. So brothers and sisters, until I see you again, may Yahweh bless you, may Yahweh keep you, may Yahweh make His face to shine upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Shalom.